Welcome back to the deep dive, everybody. Today, we are going to be, well, we're diving into something a little different. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Looking forward to it. Okay, so instead of like, you know, our usual stacks of research papers and all that, we're going to be spelunking a single personal story. Oh, interesting. Yeah, just one little anecdote. But yeah. you know me, I'm sure we can run some fascinating insights out of it. Right. I mean, that's the fun of the deep dive, the source material, forgetmenots.txt. Catchy title, no. Definitely Pete's the curiosity. Right. So we've got mistaken film, unusual flowers, and a childhood attempt to. Right. Let's just say, give nature a helping hand. What could go wrong? Sounds intriguing. Oh, it is. Okay, so our author, they're setting the scene right. Mm -hmm. A group of people have gathered outside their house, cameras all set up, ready to roll. And our author, being young at the time, naturally assumes what? That they're about to be discovered. Exactly. Sudden fame. Who hasn't daydreamed about that, right? Mm -hmm. But, and this is where it gets good, there's a twist. Yeah. The crowd, they weren't there for the author at all. Nope. They were there to document a patch of forget-me-nots. Forget-me-nots, those sweet little blue flowers. The very same. But these weren't just any forget-me-nots, apparently. Yeah. These were described as having this unusual shape. Instead of the, you know, the typical pointed petals, they were rounded. Rounded? How curious. I know. Right. But it gets even better. Our author. Turns out they'd been meticulously, like really carefully, trimming the flowers. It was as a child, convinced they were like improving nature's work. Oh, how charming. You know, that really resonates with me, that childhood urge to impose a little order on the world, make things better, you know, at least according to our own, shall we say, developing sense of aesthetics. Totally. It's so relatable. But it does make you wonder, right? about our relationship with nature, with like natural beauty, this urge to control, to enhance something that's already perfect in its own way. It's a fascinating dynamic, isn't it? This interplay between, like you said, human intervention and the whims of the natural world. And it's extra poignant when you're talking about something like the forget-me-not myosotis, to be all scientific about it. Right, the myosotis. These delicate, often blue, although they can come in other colors. Anyway, these blossoms are already swimming in symbolism, remembrance, enduring affection, all that good stuff. Right, right, like built-in meaning. And then our author comes along. Exactly. You've got this flower that naturally embodies these like powerful concepts, and our author, in all their youthful you know, exuberance, decides to just take it upon themselves to improve upon that. It's amazing. Yeah. And you know that whole thing about the rounded petals? It got me thinking about variations in flower shapes in general. Mm -hmm. Is that a common thing? To have that much, like, difference within a single type of flower. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we tend to think of plant species as having these very fixed, you know, characteristics. But the reality is way more fluid, way more fascinating, honestly. Even within a single species, you get incredible variation, shape, size, color, you name it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's due to all sorts of factors. Genetic mutations, for one, can introduce these, like, totally new traits, environmental factors too, of course, soil conditions, sunlight, even what types of pollinators are hanging around. All that can influence how a flower develops, how it looks. Huh. So it's not all like pre-programmed. Not at all. And then on top of that, you've got intentional horticultural breeding, right? Where people are deliberately selecting plants, cultivating them to enhance certain traits like color or size, or in this case, maybe petal shape. So like humans making even more variations on top of what nature's already doing. Exactly. Although, and this is where the irony, at least in the story, deepens a bit. The author, they mention later on, running into naturally occurring heart-shaped forget-me-nots. Yeah. It's true. It's like, you know, nature in its own quiet way was offering this little reminder, a gentle nudge, as if to say, hey, I've got this beauty thing covered. Don't worry about it. That's amazing. Yeah. It's like, as much as we try to, you know, shape yeah. the world, make it fit our own vision, Nature's just out there doing its thing, Dude. unfolding in its own way, in its own time, yeah. coming up with stuff that's just mind-blowing. Absolutely. This whole story, honestly, I love it. This funny little anecdote with all its botanical twists and turns. Yeah. It really does make you think, especially considering what the forget-me-not represents, right? Right. Remembrance. Affection that lasts. So does changing its appearance, even with the best intentions, even if you're a well-meaning kid with scissors, does it change the flower's meaning? That's a great question. Does it make it less beautiful, hmm. more so? I don't know. Maybe there's no easy answer. Maybe it's one of those things we just have to, like, sit with, you know? <sighs> yeah. It's a little something to contemplate the next time you stumble across a patch of forget-me-nots. Whether they're perfectly shaped or not. <laughs>
Thanks for diving in with me today. This was fun. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Until next time, keep exploring.